Oh yeah. Yeah, that's not good. <laughs> hey guys, my name is Frank from Garageaholic and welcome to episode 23 of the E30 M3 S54 build. This fire orange M3 is going to be powered up today. We're going to be applying our 12 volt battery to it and we're going to see what kind of electrical gremlins exist in this thing and troubleshoot them one by one by going through the wiring diagrams and making sure that this car is completely up to snuff. In the trunk we need to install our battery in the location where the air jack is. So it's going to be tighter than it normally is because we've got that big air jack there now. So the battery is going to be pretty tight. In fact, it's going to be a bit elevated. We need to make a custom battery hold down mechanism for that. Tight. Okay, so now we have our battery hold down mechanism connected to our firewall. We've got our battery cable still kind of hanging out in the air. On the other side in the back, we've got our positive side hooked up to the battery with the negative side still disconnected. So there's no continuity happening in the system. We've got our fuse box connections basically ready to go and hook up to this battery connection terminal and that would then power up the entire car not including the engine. We're going to be doing the engine another time but right now I want to make sure that we don't have any electrical gremlins in the chassis itself so we're going to hook up everything and then hook up our negative battery cable in the back. All right, so now I've completed my battery connections. I've got my battery connection here to the terminal. This goes to a uh, break-off third-party uh, terminal that screws onto and clamps onto the end of the battery cable and has a whole bunch of screw terminals at the top, of which I'm using a couple of them here that go to the fuse box. This uh, cable here is actually for the coolant temperature, or coolant level, rather. Um, this guy here I have broken out. That's going to end up getting connected to this guy through a terminal here. So I have to put another screw on that to connect those. And of course, this guy down here is the big guy that's going to end up getting reserved for the, uh, the starter wire, which is right here. So that starter wire right there is going to get hooked up to that. But we're not going to do the anything S54 right now. We're only focusing on chassis. So now what we can do is we can actually get uh, the battery uh, turned on. And let's turn the key and see what happens. All right, let's turn that key. Oh, well, that was bad. The wipers just, the wipers just went all the way down. So we got to reset the wipers. All right. So I heard that sound. That was not good. I think that I have to remove the wipers and let them do their thing. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's not good. <laughs> we got to take the wipers off and reset them. All right. So it looks like the wipers are actually working correctly. It said that I had them clocked incorrectly because I put a brand new wiper motor in here and I guess that it just was in a weird spot when I installed it so that when I put them on thinking that it was right at the bottom, it actually wasn't. It was probably somewhere up here in reality and it should have gone, you know, in the right spot. So now that I've reset them, let's put them back on. So to rehome your wiper blade system as if you had replaced just the motor and you needed it to be back in its home position, you actually don't need to remove the entire linkage, which in many cases is a real bear and you actually can risk um, damaging these. The idea here is that you can really remove the nut on the underside of this. There's a nut on the underside of this, hard to see here. Um, it's right there on the bottom of the linkage. And I've actually, and that, that allows you to disconnect the linkage. See the linkage can now dis disconnect. And, when, and now what I can do is I can actually move it. You can see here, I can move the linkage myself independently. So what I want to do now is I really want to hook up the motor, which is now free from the linkage, back up, just like that. And I want to key on again, and I want, to, I want the motor to actually find its home. So I think I have it clocked correctly, and let me show you exactly how it, how it was clocked. So that, that gold piece has to be perfectly straight with this guy. So unfortunate that my audio cut out just right there, but that that bar needs to be parallel to the gold bracket that bolts onto the motor. And when you do that, you can see that I'm pressing the wiper intermittent. It actually turns the wipers on and up and down as accordingly. So now what we want to do is install the wiper blades just to test out this theory and make sure that they are fully aligned 100%. So there we go. I was able to fix this one single electrical gremlin, the wiper clocking in, I don't know, a half hour to 35 minutes figuring out exactly what the problem was. Now, I'm not going to lie. When I found out that those wipers are going backwards, m my first emotional reaction was, oh my gosh, we're going to break something and now I have to replace it. I have to remove everything. And I just, you know, you get, you kind of get carried away with it. But in this case, 
you know, you just kind of learn. And that's the great thing about all of it, this first start on this, this car is that all these little electrical gremlins and problems are just like little development projects in which you learn something new about the car every single time. I had no idea how to clock your uh, wipers, but I figured it out. I did it and now it wasn't a problem. It wasn't uh, something that, you know, was, was intimidating me anymore. So it was really a rewarding experience and that's why I do what I do. All right, let's get back to it now. And um, we got key on the, uh, the can. The can check obviously works. Um, the clock doesn't have power. Radio has power, but I don't, and I have the speakers hooked up, but I don't have the amp hooked up, so that makes sense. Um, none of this is working. None of the HVAC stuff is working. Blower doesn't work. Windows don't work. Um, I don't have any of the bulbs hooked up, so it's not so much of a surprise that that doesn't work. Um, headlights don't work. The interior lighting doesn't work. Looks like everything in the check panel doesn't work. So that makes sense because everything is literally, um, not working. So it's telling me that it doesn't work, which is, which is, uh, correct. How about the sunroof? Nope. And that doesn't work either. And I think I know why most of this does not work. So before we move on to understanding what's going on inside and troubleshooting them with the wiring diagrams. I have a suspicion as to why we can't get anything to, to turn on. So what we, we need to do is we need to put on from this wiring diagram came our 30H terminal. That 30H terminal on the starter is, a, is essentially a ground and it goes on right there. So we gotta put that on. And of course, I suspect that headlights don't work because the grounding for the harness this, the actual uh, headlight harness is not grounded. This is the harness. Let me turn the light on. The ground for the harness is right there. And I've already got my ground set up because of the custom engine bay paint job. So this ground has to go there. And there's also more grounds right down here. These right there. Those also need to be grounded as well for um, grounding uh, the relays. And of course, grounds for the bulbs and headlights, highs, lows, and turn signals themselves. Let's take care of this. This is the location for the 30H terminal. A very large terminal, and the large terminal goes over the very large screw. You can see right there, it slips right on top of that. All right, let's hook up the battery again. Now let's see if we can try getting the rear lights together. No rear lights are working at all. The windows still don't work, although, let's see. Oh, there we go. And let's see if the, whole, the blower works. Ah, uh, it works. Very nice. You can see the stuff coming out right now. All the infant uh, dust that, from the build. Um, still got to fix, uh, understand what's going on with the headlight switch. Working through the light switch details, uh, wiring diagram, uh, all of these little lights here are all uh, powered by the light switch, which gets its power from the junction box, which is fuse 23 and fuse 22. They're both 7.5 amps. Looking at fuse 23 and 22 right there. 23 has no fuse in it and 22 does. So let's put a seven and a half in, seven and a half in, in there. Don't have to have the key on for this, but let's see. Ah, uh, there we go. Lights are now working. And as a result, it looks like the lights have power too, although this one doesn't have power. Try to understand why the rear tail lights do not work. I figured it out pretty quick. Um, power goes to the same fuses here, goes through the light switch itself, and then it comes out to what's called a rear lights check relay, which I did not have installed there. That is exactly what this thing is. So I have to hook that up into the trunk and it should work. These are keyed so you do not install them backwards. Install them correctly. There we go. Next to the brake lights, and here is the connector for the brake lights, and there is the switch for the brake lights. And as you can see, the switch and the connector are not compatible, so as a result, we need to cut these wires, put spade connectors on them, and put them on there. All it is is really the difference in between early and late model. It's just a different switch. We could have gotten a late model switch and just plugged it in, but I think the spade terminals are gonna do the job just fine. But what I'd like to do first is, because I like to test at every stage, is to put a jumper wire across them, pretending that I'm actually pressing the brake pedal. 
Let's see if the brakes are on. And they are. What about that third brake light? Nope. Or maybe just put a bulb in. Am I right? Bam. 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 So despite all the lights working, the Euro clock is not working. And I wonder if it's because it's not getting power. So there's four wires here. Take a look at the screen here and you'll see which pins they should go on the Euro clock compared to which pins are coming from uh, the radio here. So what I determined was there's no power or ground continuity on either of these four pins. Pulling this harness back shows that it actually provides, that actually connects directly to this yellow one, which is basically power for the OBC when there was an actual OBC here. Since this is disconnected, that's disconnected. Once you plug the instrument cluster in, everything should work. And I'm gonna have to test that at a later date when I get a properly working instrument cluster. Ah, uh, I remember now why it didn't work, and that's because there was no wiring harness that goes directly from the sunroof assembly down through. It's a green wire with a blue stripe. It's supposed to connect directly into here, which goes to switch power. As you can see here, when switch power is connected, I've got power. So this is supposed to go in. What I did was I wired up a high gauge red wire that goes directly from it, and that needs to connect to it. So if I were to just connect this directly to that, you might notice that the lights are going on on the switch, meaning that the entire sunroof is then activated. So I just need to create a new switch or a new connector that goes from this high gauge wire to this high gauge wire, and it should work. All right, put a weather pack connector on there. Everything is working. Everything is glowing. And if I were to press this button, trust me, it goes all the way back. And if I, and it goes all the way forward, and its alignment is pretty much spot on. Pretty spot, pretty spot. All right, I got the headlights all wired up. So I've got my uh, highs and lows wired up. I've got my turn signals wired up. I've got both of my fog lights wired up, but only one of them has a bulb because I only have one H3 bulb. I'll have to buy more. Let's give this, let's give this a turn. All right, it's on. I have the fog lights jumped right now because I don't have a fog light switch at the moment. And if I were to pull this plug, pull the uh, thing, Wow, looks really nice. Let's see how the brights look. Damn, all right, I gotta, I gotta align the brights, but no big deal. The MLED brights look really nice. I mean, you can see the halogen brights right there. So we definitely need some work there. When the brights are on, the fog lights are off. So let's turn the brights off. Let's see how it all looks. Wow, it looks real nice. Wow, look at that. It's pretty bright, I'm not gonna lie. Reverse light wiring is very straightforward on this swap. Here we've got a normal E30 connector. The female side is on the chassis end. And then this goes to a two pole connector with the centering locking mechanism right up there. And that's, that's the perfect uh, keying for the sensor on the actual transmission. On the transmission side, it bolts onto the driver's side and snakes up through the shifter console area. On the E30 chassis side, you snake it through and you plug it in. Now you turn key, shift into reverse, and enjoy the view. All right, guys, that just about does it for our episode today. The one thing we did not do is central locking, so we will be doing that in a later episode. It'll be a fully dedicated, it'll be a lot of work, the central locking, but we'll get there. In the next episode, we're going to be taking care of the S54 and getting that running. That's right, not just wired up, but running. Please be sure to hit that like button. Please comment and subscribe. Tell your friends about what I'm doing here. We are very few episodes left on this whole entire build, and I'm very excited to continue to share it with you. Thanks a lot, guys, for watching. I am Frank, and I'm out of here. Later.